Uh, so welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. And this will be the final video on the frequency functionality on these process calibrator units in front of us. And the function is the actual Q pulse function. Uh, I'll just set up onto the units themselves and we can take a look at the setup of it. So the Q pulse function puts out a specific number of pulses set in this window here for a specific time span set in the bottom window. So we're currently set up for uh, 20,000 pulses with a 10 millisecond period on it. Uh, we can get to the Q pulse function from function uh, output and you can see here we're set to Q pulse. Um, we, are, we have the option of a, a level output or a switching output uh, frequency. Whilst it's there, it doesn't have the same functionality as all these previous functions. You don't really set it. You set it in the window back on the main screen there. But we can set the peak-to-peak -peak voltage here for the output waveform. In contrast for the input, uh, we go on to here. So whilst we have Q pulse here, the corresponding input is a count function. And for the count function, we have less options. We do have uh, a level input or a switching input, and then you can set it to pick up on a rising edge, a falling edge, or both the rising and the falling, but you cannot set the actual level. Uh, that seems to be missing, so there is no, if you like, trigger function on these units. Uh, the MR9270S does have exactly the same functionality. You can see there, we're on countdown here, and we are on level. Uh, but we've got no option to set the actual level as a trigger point, but we do get the rising falling, uh, rising and falling edge selection there as well. So we can return all those. Now this does have a slightly different mode of operation to all the other previous functions. Um, the first thing that you get is you cannot set the range on this. You also don't have any presets. So if we go to the function on presets, you see the screen doesn't change color at all. So you select any presets, they're just not available for the Q pulse function. Uh, when you come to set to use it for all the other functions, once you hit the on button, it turns the output on, which it has done here. Uh, but nothing actually happens on Q pulse, whereas with all the other functions, it starts to operate straight away. To get this to operate, you can hit the button here on the right hand side and you see it starts to count down and these units will start to count up. Uh, you can see here immediately that for our SG-04A we've got the frequency displayed as 100 Hz but on the MR9270S we've got better resolution we've got 99.999 Hz on that one there. In contrast you look at the actual digit count you see here um, the refresh rate on the SG-004 is worse, or appears to be worse, than it does on the MR9270S, but it appears to have more digits. However, uh, as this unit goes up and goes beyond the uh, 20 or 99,000, it will go there. When it goes into the 100,000, it will add the extra digits on the end and give you the same number of digits as the SG-004A. Um, what you can do with this as well is actually pause so if I hit the button again, it pauses it, and you can see we're on 26091, 26091, so both of the units are counting up exactly the same, although it looks like the refresh rate is better on this, um, and this unit doesn't appear to keep up. In reality, when you stop the waveform, it does. So if you start it again, and you see it doesn't appear to be counting up the same as the MR9270S, but when you press the stop button, it does go. It goes uh, and always matches the two between, so there is no issue there. It's just a mode of operation. The refresh rate doesn't seem to be as good on the SG-004A than it does on the MR9270S. I'll just put this little video up briefly. This will show the actual operation of the MR9270S as it goes over the resolution on the counter function there. So you can see it does produce the same amount of digits if they are needed. Um, so you can see here, uh, once we stop it and pause it, it does carry on from where it left off. And it goes again every single time. To reset this, I just hit the off button and it goes back to the 2000 counts there. To reset these, the SG-004A, reset the counter by holding in the in. And then you see it's reset. And then we have the specific reset button on the MR9270S, which we can press there, that resets that one. So I'll just give you a picture of the scope waveform there. 
and you can see that our frequency is 100 Hertz. Uh, the duty cycle is 50%. It always stays as 50%. You cannot adjust the duty cycle on the pulse there, irrespective of what you set the frequency to on the Q-pulse function. So we did do some measurements comparing the frequency out on these units. Uh, put the plot up here. Um, you can see that the MR9270S has a slightly worse tolerance with regard to the pulse width in comparison to the Furnace units, especially when you look at the one millisecond and the five millisecond settings. But they are all within their own manufacturer's tolerances, so there's no great issues with it. It's just that the Furnace units seem to be operating to a slightly better tolerance with that aspect. So the other aspect to measure is the actual number of pulses coming out of the unit. Um, you can see here in this plot that the MR9270S appears to put out an extra pulse in comparison to what its setting is. Uh, the, if you put 10 pulses on the Fenersi, it will output 10 pulses. That's seen as 11 pulses when you use the MR9270S. Now, if you're putting out a low number of pulses, that extra pulse has a much more significant impact on the tolerance than if you're putting out a high number of pulses. So the 10 pulses there, you can see it's 10%. At 100 pulses, it's 1%. At 1,000 pulses, it's 0.1%. Um, so it is a slightly strange quirk on this MR9270S. Uh, I'll just uh, reconfigure the test setup here so I can show that on the oscilloscope. Okay, so for my test setup here, you can see I've set this to 10 pulses coming out at 10 milliseconds again. Both our counters are set to zero on there. And if we just move around to the scope, you can see there we are set up on a single sequence. So uh, this is going to just fire the once when I test the output here. So if I go on, you know, there, and if we count along there, we can see we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pulses going along there and if I just pan back to the actual units themselves you can see uh, we are on 10 pulses there and 10 pulses at the top there. Okay so we've reset everything so that the MR9270S is now going to source the 10 pulses with a 10 millisecond duration. Um, I am feeding the output of the MR9270S back into its own input so it should count itself and the SG-004A there, the counter is also set to zero. The SG-003A is out of the circuit because that has no measurement capability. Uh, I'll just go back out and include the scope into everything. So now we've got the scope running. Uh, that's running in single sequence again. So to get the MI9270S, we have to hit the output again. And then it's actually the up button or the up arrow on this one to trigger it and we trigger it there. So if we count on this now, we've got an extra pulse. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pulses. And if we go onto the actual counters themselves and zoom into those, you can see here that I'm displaying eleven on the SG-004A and also eleven on the MR9270S. Uh, and that appears to happen irrespective of how many pulses you're putting out or the different pulse width. I've tried that as well. So slightly curious about that. Seems to be a bit of a quirk of the firmware on this MR9270S, but the SG-004A is again coming out on top with that functionality and is not showing any errors at all. Okay, so what I'm just gonna do now is clear this away and reset everything to bring a flow meter into the circuit and show you a practical application for this Q-Pulse functionality on these units. Okay, so this will be a practical demonstration of the use of the Q-Pulse function and the counter function on these units. Um, I have here a little flow meter. Now I have kind of messed up with the selection of this flow meter a little bit. Since I lost my job, I don't have the same type of access to equipment that can be tested as I did before. So I purchased this one off on Amazon. It's a nice little cheap unit, but it doesn't come with any information whatsoever. But with this unit, I've been able to play around and I can get it pretty much worked out as to what I think it would be. Now with regard to the flow meter, the number of pulses that you put out that will be the quantity in litres that you would see at the top here. And 
the actual pulse width that you set at the bottom here, that will be equivalent to the flow. So this is the sense here, I doubt you'll be able to see this. Um, it's like a little propeller inside this that spins around. So the speed at which it spins around at will vary the width of the pulse coming out of the sensor. And obviously how many revolutions it does will be the number of counts. And we can do a little demonstration of this, although it will get noisy because I have a little, a little fan to put some air through this sensor and then we'll be able to see the counter going up and we'll be able to see this counter going up and the signal on the scope as well. So bear with me whilst I make a bit of noise. So there you can see it in operation. And if I back it away so there's less flow going through, you can see the pulse width gets larger. And you can see number of pulses going up on the SG-004A. So that was the unit in demonstration there. If we, you could see the pulses coming up on the scope and they could vary as I positioned the fan differently on the actual sensor. And I'll just try and zoom in onto the actual instrument. Now you can see here we've gone up. So our pulse count is 1168. Um, our pulse frequency was obviously going as we were putting air through, it's stopped now. And you can see we've put through uh, 1.94 litres has gone through the actual flow sensor there. So that shows you that it actually works. What I'm just going to do now is reset everything and then move this over to the output so that I can show this pulsing the actual flow meter. Okay, so we've reset everything and we're going to get the SG-004A to put out 600 pulses, which is equivalent to one litre of flow or thereabouts on this instrument. And each pulse is going to be 10 millisecond width, which is equivalent to 10 litres per minute of flow. So um, we'll just span it out. Uh, yeah, we'll just do it first off with the scope in place so you can see the actual pulses going on, um, so we can switch him on and we can go there, so you can see the actual pulses there and there you can see it's gone off so we will spin back onto the actual instruments uh, so you can see there I've got one litre of flow through uh, the actual flow rate has gone off because the number of pulses are off but if I reset it and do it again uh, you hopefully see we've got 10 litres of flow up there. Uh, let's do it again. Lights on, short duration light on this. So you can see it's gone to 10 litres of flow. And eventually now we've gone up to 3 litres there, which is equivalent to the 600. So if I change the pulse width on this. So we've just reset everything there, we'll put the light on. And you can see we are now running 50 millisecond pulse, and that's equivalent to 1.99 litres per minute, uh, so a slower rate. The sensor, the little propeller sensor, has taken longer to go past the sensor, so it's given a longer pulse, 50 milliseconds pulse, and slowing the rate down. Uh, but we should still, with 600 pulses, we should still get around about 1 litre of flow, 5.01 litres, uh, 600, 600. So that's a little demonstration of the use of the Q-Pulse functionality and the counter functionality on these units so that you can test a flow meter out. That seems to work quite well for that. Um, as I said, I didn't get any information with this unit from Amazon, but with this little Finercy unit and the MR9270S as well, I've been able to work out that the 600 pulses gives me one litre of flow and changing the frequency or the width of the pulse changes the actual flow rate so you can play around with these settings and get whatever flow you want for the flow meter to test its functionality out. Um, so yeah, it seems to work pretty well for that. So that'll be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.